Hey, what's going on guys? Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces, and this is more of a continuation of my previous video where I talked about M.2 um, and your options uh, with hard drives or SSDs, so to speak. Um, and I wanted to kind of test out uh, your M.2 slot, which on most motherboards, you if you have three M.2 slots, it's always going to be that middle one that's going to wind up sitting underneath a GPU of some type unless you have the ASUS motherboard where the M.2 is maybe at the bottom and then you have the special DIMM slot for it to sit up there by the memory in which case um, that would be an opportunity for you so that way you don't have to worry about thermal issues with the other ones but most motherboards are going to have uh, the M.2 above the GPU in the middle uh, underneath the GPU and then at the very bottom with my motherboard I did get a M.2 heatsink but I had to get another one and the one I got uh, was from EK Waterblocks. Now there are better M.2 heat sinks out there, um, well not better but uh, comparable. Uh, the problem though and my concern was the height because most of the M.2 heat sinks got a pretty you know, thick heat sink and um, it will wind up hitting the GPU. So in this video I just want to talk and show you some numbers of what I saw. Uh, without a heat sink and with a his heat sink because my concern was that that drive was getting too hot and probably thermal throttling in certain situations and so in order to test those situations um, I did test during gaming and then stress testing I know stress testing isn't going to show you real world values because your 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 uh, your SSD may not get that hot but it's still um, I want to show you the difference in temps between with and without the heat sink EK Waterblocks is um, making or, or makes the M.2 heat sinks, which uh, for me is uh, the better choice because with my RTX 2080 uh, that takes up 2.75 slots in the uh, case itself, sits right over the M.2 and there's no really no airflow, especially when the fans are turned off because the fans um, turn off below like 55C. And then when I'm gaming, it kicks on. But when it kicks on, all it's doing is just taking that air in and blowing the hot air onto the M.2, which can also raise the temperatures. Um, the clips that came with this heat sink are a little bit cumbersome. Uh, but, I mean, it could have been mismanufacturing or something got bent during shipping. I don't know what happened. All I know is that if you see on this end here, uh, the metal clips kind of curl in so it locks into place and then it has a little lip up that little lip you're supposed to use to push in and for me pushing in it, because it was bent on one side uh, was a little bit hard but it comes with a back plate so the the back of your m.2 and the top of your m.2 is is nice and cool and uh, thermal pads and everything you need matter of fact I'm gonna show you that uh, right now and, and talk about my setup all right, so I'm not working on my normal uh, GN mod mat, but here's the problem. We got this RTX 2080 from ASUS, which is a 2.75 uh, slot card. And you can see, here's the bottom M.2, but you can see that this card takes up a pretty decent amount of space and covers that middle M.2. So because this card's sitting right on it, I grabbed a EK water blocks uh, well it's not a water block but it's an EK M.2 NVMe heatsink so I'm gonna slap that on there and see if we can't reduce temperatures it does come with a seal so if the seal is broken if you get one sent to you and the seal is broken uh, that's not good but it's a little tiny guy a little heatsink there's the clips because it does have a back plate and then here's a uh, 0.5 millimeter and then a 1 millimeter uh, thermal pad that we have to also install. Obviously, you're going to have some extra left over that you can use on either, uh, you know, a GPU or another M.2 heatsink. And we're going to be putting it on a 960 Evo. So there it is assembled. Comes with this little guide. So the one millimeter pad is on the top, the 0.5 millimeter is on the bottom. Be careful because you don't want to snap or break anything. Actually, fighting with these clips, I'm actually am kind of worried, but we'll find out here how everything turns out. Uh, you just peel the, uh, you know, normal thermal pads. You just peel the pads off or the, the protective covering 
and then put the pads on. Uh, I would put them on the heat sink. So basically either the back plate or the heat sink itself and then position the heat sink and the back plate just right. So that way you still have this screw hole hole that you can, uh, you know, actually screw down all that good stuff. So let's get it in the system. All right, so continuing on, as you can see, my my biggest concern was the height of the M.2 uh, once the heat sink was applied. And of course, uh, coming to look at it, the marketing material for EK does show it kind of fits, but it, since it's coming from an upper angle, it's kind of hard to tell. So here it is in my system, side view. It does barely fit right underneath the height of the PCI slot. So your GPU should be able to fit no problem. Um, and you, you should have no issues whatsoever. As you can see with the this clip, both of them were bent on one side. So that was where I was having the issues uh, when installing it. But once installed, and you do want to be careful, you don't want to break your SSD. You're going to have to apply a decent amount of force, but you don't want to apply too much because you'll break your, your M.2 SSD. So don't do that. Now, I want to show you some temps. Um, I'm going to show you uh, ATO or ATTO, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to show you a clip real quick of the temps rising as I was testing. And now this is going to be not a real world representation because these, these type of benchmarks or stress tests, I guess you could say, um, they, they really put a, a hamper or stress out, which is the whole point of them the SSDs to, to, to determine maximum performance. Now I'm gonna skip around, but uh, I'm gonna try to see if I can throw a, a graph up or two. But the temps does rise. And, and if you look here in the bottom right hand corner, right below me, the top one is the slot or the M.2 that does not have a heat sink. The bottom one is the slot that's being protected by the ASRock uh, M.2 heat sink. So the ASRock Z390 Tachi and Tachi Ultimate, I believe, both have a long heat sink that sits on top of the M.2 SSD. So the difference in temperature is dramatic. So, I mean, we just peaked at 60 in the bottom one, and we're at 76 in the top one. And this is sitting right below the GPU. Now, mind you, the GPU is not doing anything right now. We're just stressing the SSD. But in a situation like gaming, your GPU is being stressed, your SSD is being stressed. Now, the SSD may not be working as hard because it's just rendering uh, maybe areas in the MMO or loading up stuff or, uh, you know, textures, all that good stuff. It's loading while your GPU is rendering, and then you have higher temperatures. But in a gaming scenario, you're not really going to thermal throttle your M.2 SSD, whether it's the 960 or the 9. Um, 970 Evo. Now, if you have the Pro model, you might want to, you definitely want to consider uh, the heatsink because I know the Pros get a little bit warmer than the Evos. So here we are. We peaked at 88. I'm gonna skip ahead real quick. Uh, 93, 94. So we averaged though, not just the peak, but we're averaging around 74C on the second M.2 without the heatsink versus the 57 with the ASRock um, stock heat sink that comes with the motherboard. Uh, peak reads uh, 3500, which is within spec, um, 34, 3500, and then uh, peak writes around 2900, 3000, which again is within spec. But if we move to Crystal Disk Mark, this one, if you wanna know your read and writes, there's not gonna be too much of a difference, but we'll show you, uh, you might have to pause the video because I'm just gonna keep moving. But if I skip ahead and Crystal Disk Mark, again, it doesn't stretch as much as ATTO or ATO, but it did hit 82 with an average of 57 compared to a peak of 63 on the bottom one and an average of 59. And then there's your read and write speeds if you want to compare. So around 3,500 reads, and then you could look at the 4K and then sequential and all that good stuff. Uh, versus 2900 writes. Now, if I move over to with the heat sink and run that same crystal disk uh, bench, let's pay attention to temps first, and you can uh, take note of the speeds. The speeds did increase slightly because both heat, uh, both M.2s are being cooled adequately now. 
but we're sitting around 63 on the second M.2 below the GPU, 64 with the ASRock heatsink, average of 55 on the second versus the 56 on the ASRock heatsink. So even though ASRock, the M.2 heatsink is longer and has more surface area, because the M.2s aren't producing as much heat, it doesn't need to dis that surface area isn't really being fully utilized. But it is noteworthy because it is something that comes with the motherboard um, and is beneficial. The problem is, is the other slots aren't protected. So my recommendation, and there's your read and write speeds in case you want to compare with the previous clip. Um, the read and write speeds are going to be roughly the same whether you have the heat sink on or not. Um, the, or within error of margin, I guess you could say, but the thermal constraints you won't have to worry about anymore. Your GPU is not going to be suffocating that M.2 and sitting right on top of it because the, the GPU, as you can see, saturates or heats up that M.2, especially during, when, during use case scenarios where you're running the GPU and the SSD. Now, I believe it's definitely worth the investment, especially being only 12 bucks. And if you find it at a different place, you might spend around 20, anywhere from, from 15 to 20 bucks. But getting a M.2 heatsink, whether you get it from EK or somewhere else, just make sure the height will fit. Obviously, I did this video so I could verify that the EK M.2 NVMe heatsink will fit with a GPU um, or right underneath a GPU. So there's your answer for that. But I haven't tested every M.2 heatsink, and some of them do come, um, you know, with a pretty beefy heatsink. And some of them don't even come with a heatsink that underneath the bottom. And you really want to cool the bottom and top of your M.2 heatsink. So take this information. Hopefully it helps you out. It was a follow-up to my previous video because I was concerned about thermal issues for my M.2, especially the one in the second slot. I hope this informational... Uh, would help you. I hope this information will help you in some form or fashion in making a decision. Uh, I will say one thing when you do the installation, be careful. So you have to tighten that screw, that M.2 screw down back to the motherboard. And if you have the uh, back plate a little bit too far up, you won't be able to get it in there. Or if you have the top uh, heat, heat sink too far up, you won't be able to get the screw in there. So you definitely want to leave some spacing for your screw. Um, it is a little bit cumbersome to hold it and clip it, so make sure you have a flat surface area that um, obviously is, is static free. Uh, but be careful with the amount of force that you use in a, you know cl clipping or clamping down the M.2 heatsink. You don't want to break your SSD. I, I can't stress that enough. But take Bye. this information. I hope it helps you out, and I will catch you guys in the next one. I appreciate your time, and you have a good one.